This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related. Today is a bit of a mix between discussion and news, this time revolving around Amazon and their cloud gaming service Luna. That being said, we will also be touching on Google Stadia here as well. You see, both Google and Amazon are brand new to cloud gaming. Not only that, but they're actually new to the gaming landscape overall. At least, partly so. While both have run their own app stores respectively with games on it, this time they're much more involved with the gaming community. And that community has certain expectations for what they want to see out of a platform holder. One of the biggest and most challenging expectations is trying to secure exclusive first party content. That revolves around outright buying a publisher or studio or trying to build one from the ground up and that's no easy task. We already know Google's approach here, they seem to want to build from the ground up as much as they can and they're poaching some quality creators from different studios. And like everything else in life, there's both positives and negatives to deciding to go this route. On one hand, you have cultivated a team you think is top notch for game development and they're starting on a brand new slate so expectations are fresh. On the other hand, well, it's gonna take some time before we see these developers actually produce anything. It's the very reason why we've yet to see any sort of first party exclusive despite Stadia being almost a year old. Now contrary to Google, Amazon has already opened up multiple game studios that have worked on multiple projects. It's fair to say that they have quite a bit of experience already working together as a team. They've already delivered quite a few games, so this should put them in a better position than Google at launch, right? Sadly, that's not the case here, and this is where that bit of news comes in. If you haven't heard already, Amazon just shut down their second game after only being 5 months old. It appears that so far, Amazon's really been struggling to enter the gaming landscape through their double or triple A titles. It's a pretty stark reminder that not everything these first party studios end up putting out from these new companies is going to be a surefire hit. While I can safely say that I'm really excited to see whatever the first party studios at Stadia Games and Entertainment can produce, it's fair to say that they can still flop pretty hard. Amazon's game studios are learning this the hard way. So far, two of their online titles have already been shut down. Their brand new upcoming MMO has a lot of skeptics talking and it just recently got delayed yet again. If I'm being completely honest here, I don't really have high expectations for New World succeeding. And aside from that, the only other notable release was the Grand Tour game, which released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One to pretty mixed reviews. So what can Google and even Amazon learn from these mistakes? And more importantly, how will this affect Luna and Google Stadia? Well, to answer that second question, it should come to no one's surprise that exclusive titles can really be a deciding factor on whether or not people choose to check out a platform. I know plenty of people who have picked up a console for games like Uncharted, Halo, and Super Smash Bros. And I have little to no doubt that even those who hate cloud gaming services would be more than willing to try them out to play the next big thing. If only it were that simple. As we've already discussed, it's not easy delivering a high quality game. Personally speaking, if they want the highest chance of success, I do believe they should be focused on making a high-end single-player experience. And I say that as someone who generally loves multiplayer games more. I do think this is the main reason why Amazon's game studios have had such a hard time delivering on a big game. It seems clear to me that the higher ups at Amazon really want their game studios to deliver on something that would be considered streamer friendly. Their three latest projects including the two that got shut down were PvP oriented multiplayer titles and the one coming up is an MMO. And in my eyes, it seems really damn hard to actually make a multiplayer title stand out among the rest on its own. For every Fortnite success story, there are hundreds if not thousands of other titles that will never see that sort of success. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that single player IPs are guaranteed hits either. 
but to me it does appear that they would be easier to market and make stand out on their own among its peers. I do know some people may bring up the fact that you could leverage the cloud to increase player count for a multiplayer battle royale. It's something that I think myself would be pretty hyped to see. But frankly speaking, right now both Luna and Stadia would need to focus on getting a player base to sustain those type of multiplayer matches. Let's be honest here, Super Bomberman R Online recently launched as a Stadia Pro title and every time I hit quick play, I'm being matched up with mainly bots. And that's just a 64 player game. And before you think that's the only title that's struggling to have multiplayer matches, look at PUBG which just recently shut down mouse and keyboard support on Stadia. There simply wasn't enough people playing that way for them to bother keeping those servers up. I genuinely believe producing a solid single player title would end up bringing in more newcomers to the cloud gaming landscape and thus create more of a user base for each platform. I think most of us can agree that cloud gaming is one of those technologies people need to try out before believing it. And much like virtual reality, it's gonna take some time before it starts seeing some sort of acceptance. Cloud gaming needs to get to a point where it can showcase that they can produce titles that just wouldn't be possible on more traditional platforms. It'll be very interesting to see what that title ends up being and what kind of game it is. I'm very curious to see what Stadia Games and Entertainment are working on as well as whether or not Amazon will continue to push for more multiplayer titles. And with that, that's all I really wanted to discuss today, but I am very interested in hearing your thoughts on the subject. What type of game do you think would draw in newcomers to try out these cloud gaming services? Now, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, consider hitting that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Today's end of video question is going to revolve around the discussion topic. What's your dream scenario for a cloud gaming exclusive? What genre of game would it be and how would it leverage the cloud to do something that hasn't been done yet? I look forward to your replies in the comments section below. As always, thank you for watching this video. This has been Generation Stadia giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related. The Gen S community is over 5,000 strong and growing by the day, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.